Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. One of the things I absolutely love to do is editing photographs, taking pictures and editing photos. And over the years, I have become very good at using apps like um, Photoshop, Lightroom, Capture One, Photoscape, Snapseed on the mobile phone, so many apps. And recently, um, maybe a couple of years ago, I came across Affinity and I bought into the Affinity environment. So I bought Affinity Publisher, Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer. And if you follow this kind of news, if you are really into the graphic design and content creation space, you would have heard that recently Affinity upgraded or released a new version of their app. So they already had Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo and Affinity um, Publisher. And now they, they have this new app. It's now called, well, it's basically Affinity, but you say Affinity by Canva. And the app I use mostly in the Affinity environment is Affinity Publisher because I work a lot on documents um, like reports. And I've also used Affinity Designer because I also do quite a considerable amount of graphic design. But the app I didn't really spend time on was Affinity Photo because I had access to Adobe Photoshop and I have all these other apps I use for editing. So on my mobile phone, I have Adobe Lightroom. I use Capture One on my desktop. I've used Photoscape in the past a lot. I just felt that all of these other apps, including Photoshop, were already enough for me. They were doing everything I wanted to do. I was already used to them and I never really got used to affinity photo i know it's a capable software i know it's awesome but it just just wasn't flowing for me like the way all these other apps flowed for me maybe because i've been using it for long maybe if i discovered affinity photo back when i was really really an active photographer then maybe that would have been my app so uh, but recently ever since the new release of affinity which of course i did download and i already have a paid canva account but you don't even need to have a paid canva account to get affinity you just need to sign up have a canva account and you can use it for free um I decided that I was going to get more serious with it using Affinity Photo because in the new app, it's like three apps in one. So there's the vector environment, there's the pixel environment where you can use to edit photos. And then there is the layout environment. And then they have all this other stuff. You can do color grading, Canva AI and so on. But I said I was going to spend the next few weeks learning or relearning and getting used to the Affinity Photo component of the new Affinity. And so I'm going to be creating a series of videos on how I use these photo editing software to optimize and edit photos which is something i just love to do i love editing photographs so um i invite you to join me on this journey i'm going to create a separate playlist for my live demonstration photo editing because in a couple of videos i'm going to be pulling out photos i like and editing them in different environments i'm going to show you how i use capture one i'm going to show you how i use adobe lightroom mobile i'm going to show you how i use affinity photo and any other software that i come across that helps to edit photos so i hope you find this series of videos interesting let's get into the video today we're working in the new affinity which is affinity by canva so affinity has already existed before there's been affinity photo affinity designer affinity publisher but the latest release is the Affinity by Canva. I'm not sure if it's called Affinity Revolution. So we're going to, first of all, import an image straight into Affinity. Yes, I love this image. I take this image with a Sony camera. Let's see if there's a way to show the information. So yeah, this is the image information right at the top. This is the dimension, 26 megapixels, shot with the A6700, Viltrox 20mm f2.8 FE. So it's amazing that Affinity shows all the information and shows even for more information here. ISO 800 f2.8, 20mm, shot at 1 over 2,000th of a second, which is it's really incredible that you can see the information. Hey, guess just to let you guys know that I'm not an expert in Affinity yet. I basically um, learning as I go and I'm just creating this video so that we can learn together. So apparently when you open a raw image, it opens in this, um, this um, page where you see all the information about it. So the basic information, basic editing tweaks you can do, which cover things like um, exposure, black point brightness, and then if you have some presets you can create your presets and save you can enhance the image here and um, you can enhance things like contrast clarity saturation and all of that white balance shadows and highlight profiles 
and then looking at the lens image lens you can correct lens distortion here you can sharpen here you can adjust tones and create some masks so this is pretty interesting wow this is it's amazing that there are some tools here to do some quick editing let's move this a bit and see so scope location wow metadata so this is all the information like i said so this is supposed to be a quick video i just want to show you guys how i would optimize this and like i said i'm learning as i go so here we have zoom to white balance click or drag to set white point we have red eye removal blemish removal mask paint mask erase to mask gradient to crop to and if i click on develop it to take us to another page but for now let's see what happens if i just come here to the basics wow okay so i'm bringing back some some highlights some details in the highlights area i like this so i already think i know what i'm going to do i'm going to find a way to create a mask that reduces the highlights so you can see more of the blue skies but at the same time raises the shadows wow by adjusting the black point i've already brought in more details into the shadows this is really awesome and then the brightness of course i can reduce the brightness let's reset everything and for enhance can reduce the contrast improve the clarity saturation vibrance who knows the difference between vibrance and saturation anybody can share in the comments please shadows and highlights okay wow much so yeah let's start from here i'm reducing the highlights because i want to see more blues in the sky like through the window for white balance i think i'm good with white balance and then for let's see shadows and highlights we've touched that already i don't want to touch the profiles but let's see oh wow it's a whole lot here but let's not mess around with profiles let's leave profiles the way it is we've touched shadows and highlights already um, a little bit on the exposure maybe i should increase this a bit great and for details um i think it looks pretty much okay tones i usually like to play with curves so let's see what we can do with curves and just create some points here raise this up a bit bring this down a bit yeah I can further reduce highlights by playing around with that Okay, it looks okay, but I think I need to add a few, some blacks into this thing. So one way to do that is to bring this down here a bit. So yeah, that looks good. Um, am I going to do any split toning? Do I want to do any split toning? If I want to do, I probably want my shadows to have some teal. Um, and then the highlights add, add blues to the highlights yes that makes the blues in the sky come out and then we can warm up the shadows a bit oh this is nice i like this can you see the difference let me show you so if you just look around the window the blues come out a little bit more and then yeah so this this looks great to me this looks great now uh, let's go back to details and then we'll just sharpen it sharpen a little bit amount okay yeah, and then um yeah this looks good to me okay yeah so this is um this is what we have and then we go to develop so let's see when we click on develop what happens the image opens up in the proper affinity um, interface and you can see our image here raw image uh i don't know for me I would say I like the image pretty much the way it is, but let's just play around because we're trying to learn affinity. So I created a new layer by duplicating, which is com command J. And in this layer now, I'm going to try to brighten the image a little bit. Yeah, and I'm also going to play around with some things. If I was going to add a glow, oh, there you go. So a glow, a live diffuse glow, you need to zoom in to see what's happening. Look at that. Can you see the glow? It's not bad at all. So with the, with the glow, without the glow, what do we see? Maybe 
maybe I'll just leave it. Let's look at what else we can do to optimize this image. I think I want to add a little green to it. I'm not sure. Let's see, add some noise here. Yeah. So to do that, it's better to zoom in. First of all, go all the way and see what happens. Okay. Then let's try uniform, Gaussian. Try is better. Let's leave the Gaussian blue. Um, yeah. I think it's, I think this is good. Before and after. It's a little bit too much, right? Yeah. So let's reduce the opacity. Yes. It's a little bit more. To be honest with you, this picture is beautiful the way it is. Sometimes when you do too much, it just looks somehow. So this is what I was looking for, a vignette. So let's see what happens. Okay. There's a vignette. We can see it. Now, I, first of all, when I'm doing my vignette, I like to just go, you know, make the changes quite obvious so that you can see just everything. See the hardness, softness. Okay, hardness. This is really hard. It's really soft. Scale and shape. Okay, so this looks better. I'll increase the scale, but then I'll reduce the hardness. I think this is fine. And if you see the before and after, not much difference to be honest. Okay, I think we're going to let's go back in. Let's go back in and adjust. I think this really looks good. Try and see if there's a way to preview the image before and after. How do I do a preview before and after? I mean, to me, I love this image. Everything about it is just good. The main focus is the flower pot by the window. There's, a, there's some nice tones to the sky. This strong highlight here, I like it because it just represents the fact that the sunlight streaking through. I don't want to dull it or remove it in any way, even though I say I feel it clips a little bit. So I think this is really pretty much great. So I'll show you the original image. This is the original image, which to be honest, <laughs> the original image is not bad. Original image, new image. Original image, new image. Which one do you guys like? This is the original image it looks punchier. So the difference to me is that in the original image, you can see more deeper blacks. There's some highlights clipping in the skies. But in the edited image, the skies look in smoother, cleaner. There's some color tones and there's some more details in the shadows and all that. So if I was going to ch change anything here, I'll probably just um maybe add a little contrast that's all so let's just pick up this add a little contrast yeah so that's it guys um this is the final image just wanted to show you how i get around um affinity to edit and um yeah expect more videos photo editing videos and is there anything you'd like me to try to make a video of please drop it in the comments and make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel just to key it into what this channel is all about this channel is all about inspiring creatives to be more to do more to have more and as creatives anybody who takes the time out to create something basically i'm talking about photographers filmmakers graphic designers entrepreneurs because this is my space this is what i do so i talk about gear i talk about software i talk about tips tricks i talk about mindset hacks ways to tell better stories with your creative art ways to just be better as a creative professional ways to learn new skills and it's a journey that i'm on myself because i'm also learning all of these things so if you haven't subscribed already please join me and subscribe for some reason i i think maybe because i've not been so consistent the YouTube algorithm is not recommending my videos anymore. It's quite disheartening and discouraging and disappointing, but I take responsibility. Maybe if I was more consistent, especially consistent with the kind of videos I post the topic for now, this is just really what I have to offer. And I'm going to keep going until when YouTube says, Hey, you know, your channel is not working. You have to close it down. But till then we don't give up. What I'm going to work on now is being more consistent with my post posting with my message, which is that you can be more, you can do more, you can have more. If you follow this channel, you can learn how to edit photos better. You can learn how to tell stories better. You can learn how to make videos better. You can make, learn how to be a better creative and so on and so forth.